up, everyone? It is me, your favorite actor, the Hollywood assassin, Mark Schwann. Thank you for joining me for Shot of Wrestling, the video edition. And today, I have a very, very special guest of mine. He's the one that actually brought me into the world of professional wrestling, so I owe it all to him. He actually got me onto Shot of Wrestling against Putty's wishes. He is the leader of the Satsujin Squad. Give it up for Eric Jaden. Hey, what's up, guys? Mark, thank you for that intro. It's awesome. No <laughs> doubt, my man. I'm a little disappointed. I was expecting a, yeah! <laughs> I can't do it. <sighs> yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Music to my ears every goddamn time. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done that in a while. <laughs> you haven't. I haven't heard it in a while. I, I need yeah. It's been, what? It's been about... A year almost? Yeah, about a year now. That's crazy, right? Since the pandemic started. So it'll be about a year. Nice. You look good. Thank you. Thank you. Feeling a little tired today, but I got energy, which is good. And I have to say, I love that you're wearing the Shot of Wrestling merch right there. Buy the shirt, people. Going like hotcakes. Buy the shirt. <laughs> you're doing better than I am. I'm, I'm not wearing it. <laughs> <laughs> I have the Shot of Wrestling undies on, though. Hey, I got to get my hands on that. <laughs> <laughs> now Abel has to get that going. <laughs> so, Eric, thank yes. you for being the first guest here um, for my round of interviews here. I'm going to go video style for Shot of Wrestling, get the YouTube page going. Um, oh, awesome. So, I know you've been on the show before as a guest. You've been interviewed before, like, I think twice already? Yeah, twice, yeah. Damn, man. We must love you. <laughs> I think the last one was episode, quote unquote, 69. How appropriate. <laughs> How appropriate. Was that your call or was that Putty's call? No, I, I think that was Abel's. Uh, that was Abel? <laughs> yeah, Abel's sewered mine. Dirty mine. <laughs> of course. Of course. Yeah. So, listen, man, I just want to get things started here. Uh, sure. I have to ask you about the Satsujin Squad. Um, you know, obviously, like, I know our history and how we came about, but for those that yeah. don't know, you know, when, when you walk me through, like, the process, because you were, you were the mastermind behind this, behind, at that point, the Deadly Saiyan Squad. Yes. Um, was it you that picked out the people that were in the squad, or was that something with you and Cole? Like, walk us through that process. All right. I actually remember the day very vividly. I was walking down Junction Boulevard in Astoria, in Astoria Boulevard now in Queens. And uh, I, I called Cole because I just had this idea. And I called him up you know, out, out of the blue and I said, hey, listen. I said, we need to create this faction. And he goes, you know what? I, he goes, I've been thinking the same thing. So I said, okay, we're probably on the same wavelength on there. And he goes, I want to create a, a, a squad of Saiyans. And you should have seen, I, if I had a video call that day, Cole's grin was from one side to the other. He <laughs> just... Yeah, he, he, I, could, I, could, I could hear him grinning on there. And uh, we spoke for about, I think, two hours on the phone that day. You know, on the street. I was literally on the street just walking. And um, we created the Deadly Saiyan Squad on there. Uh, I did pick the names. I mean, excuse me, the names. The, uh, the, uh, the people who joined the squad on there. Uh, I remember at the time... Rick Recon, he had a show. He did a show with us, and I was very impressed with him. He had a lot of raw potential, mm -hmm. and I loved the Terminator, you know, um, image that he portrayed on there. So right. I saw, I saw raw potential. And then uh, we had Dominic and Chris, as you were. They were already, you know, working for us at the time. There, I think they had like two, three matches in. And again, a lot of raw potential. And I told Cole, Cole actually came out with just huge names at first. Let's get this guy. And I was like, no, 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 no. That's not. Who, a who was it? That was in mine. God, I can't remember offhand. If I remember, I'll pop it up. But I know we're just big names. He wanted to go with big names. And I said, no, let's just go off with creating. If you're going to create the squad, let's do it homegrown with guys that not really, you know, have a big name out there. So I pitched it. Why did you go that route? I'm sorry to interrupt, but why, why did you go that route as opposed to the, the bigger names? I think it was, it was much better because it would be homegrown. At the time, nobody really knew a lot of Rick Recon. And go, and then he came into BCW. Okay, so he could say he's part of BCW. Same thing with Chris and Dom; they were wrestling the independent scene. You know, 
and they came into BCW. So we wanted something homegrown. We didn't want, we, we, we didn't want, um, or oh, I didn't want somebody who already had a big name recognition that we had to like kind of play off. We wanted to have people to come in to play the characters we wanted them to play. And that's so how, you know. So it, it's kind of like molding the young talent to, uh, to the image. And I guess economically for Cole's wallet, it's cheaper that way. Well, yeah, it does start to cheaper that way in a sense, but also we get to create something that nobody else has. Right. With people that nobody else really knew on right. there. And that's what we you know. That's the route I pitched to him. Luckily, he agreed. Okay. And then we created the Deadly Saiyan Squad. Uh, we added yourself shortly after with Naya Kennedy on there. And uh, Naya Kennedy uh, is very interesting. She, I've been working with her prior, you know, with, in BCW and other promotions. And our goal with her was that the manager gimmick was such a, like a dying art. Mm -hmm. at, you know what I'm saying? That there was just... Oh, yeah. And I love the manager game. I think there's just nothing better than to have a heel manager out there working, you know, as, as an extra just to get that, that emotion from the people. That's just awesome. So we wanted to bring the manager gimmick back. And, of course, me being me, I said, hey, let's double it up. <laughs> so we brought two managers on. And uh, Deadly Saint Squad hit, hit it off. We had some bumps in the road. We had some feuds. And um, then we had that famous uh, quote unquote letter in the mail. <laughs> so we had to evolve right. and we became the Set Suja Squad. Now, what was the change between the Saiyan Squad and the Set Suja Squad, would you say? Are you, are you happy with the evolution of the squad in general? Yeah, at first, it was, you know, I, 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 I wanted to continue the, the Saiyan gimmick, mm -hmm. but I knew it wasn't possible. Uh, but it was a blessing in the sky to evolve. I mean, in wrestling, I just, it's, it, I see this so many, so many, with so many workers that they play continuously the same gimmick, the same gimmick year after year after year after year. Although they have a level of success, if you don't refresh the gimmick, you don't give the fans something new to see, you're always going to make plateau. You're never going to go to the next level. So it was a blessing in the sky to move to the Satsuja squad, which was uh, unique uh, with the name. And I remember you were part of that process and we were messaging each other for, I guess, three days straight or something like that, or a week straight. Oh God, dude. <laughs> it, it, if anyone could see like these chats going back and forth with these names that we had in mind, like, and then we also had like the group calls too. Yes. <laughs> Just like this whole we, process. Yeah. Um, it was a creative process. It was quite the creative process. And yeah. It was Chris, the one that came up with Satsujin, right? Yep. So Chris Barton came up with Satsujin. I actually really liked it. I looked at it that in the uh, Japanese form of the writing, and then we translated it, and we decided to go with it, you know, the murder squad. You know, a lot of people don't realize Satsujin means murder, but we decided to go with it and see what it took us. And we, we, we continue to play these assassin roles you know, kind of veered off from the scene, continued to be assassins. And I mean, I, I enjoy Satsujin. I enjoyed the Satsujin run. I think the pinnacle of Satsujin was definitely in the Bronx when we did the uh, Fort Apache death match, the cage oh. match. One that of my was... favorite moments actually being involved in wrestling, I have to say. It was, <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't really get involved physically until like the end. Like, Tyree Taylor gave me the punch to the face. Yeah. But, you know, it was an honor calling that match, even though we lost. Uh, I actually picked it as my match of the year, and that included, like, WWE and whatnot. Uh, mm -hmm. it was so cool to see, like, how that all went about. And, like, just the, like, the build to that match, yeah. too, was incredible. Yeah, you had, a, you had exactly about a year's built. Yeah. You know, we, yeah, we, uh, we ran the storyline in the Bronx. And it was great to work in it. It was, you know, you know, month after month after month after month. And we, you know, we kind of took over, which was our shtick. You know, we go and take over. And then it's just, you know, leading up to that and then just coming out. That's what I always feel remember, just coming out and seeing that cage. Oh, my you God. Know, like, really yeah, awesome. Yeah. It really was with the yeah. lights and the smoke and the different, you know, and, and all the, you know, because we don't, a lot of people. Uh, Yes, if if you don't if you haven't ever 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 attended a BWF show, it's really good production wise. 
because they have tons of lights and smoke screens. So I remember just looking at it and I'm like, holy crap, I'm actually going to do my first ever cage match because I had never, ever had the chance to. So Wait, to perform, whoa, whoa, time out. Actually, I, I don't think I knew this. That was your first cage match ever? That was my first cage match ever, yes. Damn, yes. bro. Yes. Never, never. I've done hardcore matches, you know, chairs, tables, and all this other stuff, but I never did that. So it, would, it had special meaning so to me. so nervous going to that match. <laughs> <laughs> we were. <laughs> so much more sense. It, yeah, it was, it was, um, it just meant so much to me. Trust me. I was there. I was hell of a nervous. I hope I didn't show it. I guess you picked up on it. I was very nervous. Well, we, I just we, wanted we to be sure. friends as well. I mean, we're legit friends. It's yeah, yeah. Typical typical manager wrestler relationship that we have so mm -hmm. you know over the, our time together of course i got to know you and i yes you know i, I definitely saw some nerves were kicking in there um mm -hmm. obviously you know now i know why i thought it was just like you know typical main event jitters of course you know there's a lot of <laughs> yeah. parts that are going to that match i know a lot was going to that match um yes. it was like the the end of the rivalry yes supposed to be and uh Yes, yeah, so that, that's what I attributed it to. Yeah, it was definitely like, like I was <laughs> super nervous. And uh, also, I just wanted to make sure because it was so many variables happening. A lot. You had so many stuff going on that I wanted to make sure everybody went in, everybody came out safe. That was one Every of my day. biggest things. Yes, and we did. We pulled out one hell of a match. Uh, you took a great bump. Naya took a crazy bump through a table. <laughs> Good stuff. But yeah, that match for the Patchy. Awesome. I think it's, I think it's definitely one of my favorites. One of the uh, greatest, I think one of the best performances that Sujin has put on. Easily. Yeah. Easily. That was, as a unit, that was um, everyone's best job. And I think probably one of the best matches I've seen BWF, one of the best matches I've seen live. Uh, you know, if, if whoever's listening right now, if they haven't got a chance, yeah. you can watch it on YouTube. It's the BWF for Apache match. Uh, I think that was what? No, 2019, I guess, because 2020 was a wash. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, a very special moment for all of us as a unit. Yes. Uh, Jaden, I mean, yes, we've had a year off from wrestling pretty much. What is next for Satsuji? You know, what what do you see going next? I mean, I, I know we've taken an interesting turn right before everything, uh, you know, closed up <laughs> for lack yes. of better words you know you are you happy with that transition are you, are you happy with where it's going do we see a refresh do we receive do we just kick off right where you left off where do you see us i think we're gonna you know if anything uh once this pandemic ends and unfortunately i think i really think that we still have another year left before life becomes really normal you know to us again uh i think we see a refresh of setsujin uh we we did make some decisions uh i think Seth Sujin will probably be a, be a split you know we split up on there uh we'll probably see yourself naya me and rick you know as part of Seth Sujin for you know for a while uh there's so many storylines that were written on it that were just left like income paper basically because of the pandemic that we right now i was just going to say i think you probably will see a you know Seth Sujin split you know, and then we'll probably work something into, you know, pushing forward. Damn. Yeah. See, I, I, I knew of the rumors of the spl of a possible split. Mm -hmm. uh, I, for one, was hoping that was not going to be the case because, you know, honestly, I mean, I, I got to know you guys, brothers and sisters, you know, and I, I know over time, it's only a matter of time, you know, no faction stays together forever. And, you know, and I know Dom and Chris are doing an amazing job as a unit, as a tag team. Rick Recon's been stepping up. You were, you were right picking the talent that you chose. You were definitely right for me. <laughs> um, but no, seriously, man. It, the day when that, that split is official, it's going to be a very sad day, at least for me. But yeah. I do know business as always. We will move on. We'll press forward and everyone will probably be better for it. Yes, definitely on it. It's a, you know, like a, a sad thing. The factions do have have to have an end date. You know, what I'm saying it could be years. Do you but, think actually yeah. there there have been critiques? Uh, sorry to cut you off, but yep. going off what you, with what you said, there have been some critiques about the Satsujin squad about maybe we've held on a little bit longer than we should have as a unit. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with that assessment? 
I think so. I think we, I think there was a lot of, uh, you know, and just being honest, you know, we we're, you know, we had a lot of creative differences in a, in a sense where we wanted to go as a unit. So I think when there's, when you, ha- especially in wrestling, when you have a lot of, when you have creative differences, which is not a bad thing. Okay. And let's not say it is, it's not a bad thing, but when you have creative differences, I think sometimes it's just best to move on, you know what I'm saying? You know, and uh, not continue to drag out something, you know, that maybe, you know, somebody doesn't want to do, you know, or somebody doesn't want to, you know, continue on there. Uh, I, all of us love Satsujin. I think we would do something with Satsujin definitely, you know, on there. Yeah. But then again, Satsujin is going to have to evolve, you know, itself again. And, you know, you, you probably see a split of Satsujin. And that's where the pen and the ink and the pen ends right there because of the pandemic. So we have to see what happens, you know, after that. <laughs> the, the shows that have been going on, right? Yeah. Because BCW did put on one show during the pandemic. And then you have other promotions that, uh, indie promotions that have continued to push forward. Do you agree with that decision? Do you think that was a smart move? I think to, to, to try it and to test it out, yes, it was a smart decision in a sense, you know, to see how we could do it. But I knew it was only temporary because if you're going to, you're only allowed to do outdoor shows, well, the weather permitting, you know what I'm saying? That's basically it. You're going to be doing a show if the weather permits and eventually it's going to get cold. And how do you do shows after that? Right. Uh, I think it was good in a sense because it tested out like what, you know, what, promotions needed to do in regards to p- protocols, getting the wrestlers tested, make sure the wrestlers were tested, you know, washing the hands, the separation and all the other stuff that comes with it on there. But I, I still think we should have waited in a sense. I, I mean, there's a, there's, a, there's a side of me that we should should have waited. Uh, look, things are still bad out there. That's just the way I see it. Yeah. If anything, things are getting worse out there. Yeah. But, you know, that was to be expected. I think things are always going to get worse before they get better. I, I do mm-hmm. see signs of things getting better. But, of course, you know, we have these different strains of the virus, which makes things a lot worse. Uh, exactly. You know, me personally, I, I think there are a, a handful of promotions that I do know for a fact were handling it well. They had these certain protocols in place. But you did hear of the, some other promotions, some down south, that just let it go as if it was a normal day. Yeah, Which exactly. Did not play out well. No, I remember. I think we shared a couple photos of those shows. Yes, shows yes. are packed to the rim, people by next to each other, and it's just, uh, it's just, it's horrible to see that because it just, it brings a bad light to our profession. It totally does. It totally, especially yeah. when, you know, we had a lot of bad lights come to professional wrestling, and we're just trying to see ourselves out of it. You know, that's mm-hmm. the last thing we need there. Exactly. But, now, Eric, moving on real fast, yeah. you know, wrestling-based, you had your own column in the Rockaway Times, was it? Yes. So tell us a little bit about that. Actually, it's funny you just mentioned it because I just got the email when I woke up this morning <laughs> for, the, for the, you know, the, the latest edition. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's my first column for 2021. I did. I, it was, I, did, I wrote about, I, I would say about nine months worth during the pan- a pandemic on a weekly column for the uh, Rockaway Times and it was great. It was something new, something that I really never really dabbled in, you know, in, in, in before. And so it, 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 I remember going to you because of your background, you yeah. know, for you to, you know, your, your background, your critique on it, you know, on my columns. And then uh, this past week, I get a phone call from the editor and he goes, hey, when are you coming back? I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't think I was invited back. So they invited me back to continue writing for this year and it was great. Uh, I had uh, my email box blow up. I think I had close to, the last time I checked was about 1,123 emails. I never even knew there yeah. was like that big of a wrestling fan base in Rockaway. It, it, it was, it, it, I, I expected like, I expected it to take off well, but I didn't expect to get the amount of questions I did. You know, and 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 and, and that's, that's uh, most of the questions I hated. Was like, you know, the usual is wrestling fake. <laughs> you know, I was wrestling. Fake. Ask like, oh. I'm sure you get some like ridiculously stupid questions. Yeah, but then I would get a lot of smart questions. I would get a lot of really fan based questions. You know, what regarding to the product, the WWE, what I think about this and that. So I would. I'm very happy. I 
prodded myself in answering every single one. Now, if they didn't make it to the to the column, that's fine, but they still got answered. Right. So, uh, yeah, I, so far I answered over 1,100 emails. Wow, man. Yeah. Impressive. See, I never fancied you a journalist. I never fancied myself a journalist either. That's the last thing I ever thought I would do. So right? How, how did this happen? How, how did you get this gig here? It's, it, you know, we had the pandemic, right? It was yeah. going on. It was just starting. And then I knew everything was going to go downhill, in a sense. And I said, okay, cool. Shoot job, going downhill. Everything's going downhill. So what do I do to keep myself busy? And um, the Rockaway Times is one of those papers I always picked up. Now, mind you, we didn't go out during the pandemic. So I was like, you know, if I went out to the uh, supermarket just to grab the essentials, I saw the Rockaway Times, I picked it up. And I said to myself, you know what? I want to ask him if I can write for them. So, I, yeah, I knew the local editor, um, shot her an email. I think within like 30 minutes, exactly, 30 minutes, she just, you know, she goes, okay, you got to call him. <laughs> this is the amount of words you can write, blah, blah, blah. It's weekly. Go. And I was like, yeah. And I was like, I said, damn, I just stuck my foot in my mouth because I never wrote for anybody. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I didn't think they would buy it, but I, 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 I read a lot of stuff, you know, like the PWI magazine, stuff like just articles, just try to get a rhythm on it. And I, tr I tried stuff, you, you know, I tried different things, you know, what, you know, covering shows, not covering shows. Uh, the last writings I did was just covering wrestling news, you know, on what's going on in the wrestling on there. So I was trying different things and they seemed very impressed by it. So for getting a phone call and say, hey, when you're coming back, I'll take it. <laughs> so where do you get your ideas from? Like, because uh, they're not telling you what to write. So you're coming up with that with yourself. I, I noticed a few times you, you do kind of break the fourth wall with, uh, as far as with kayfabe, you kind of break yeah. down what goes on there. Uh, you know, I do know you're very big on kayfabe. Mm -hmm. How was, how did that feel writing that? You know, I didn't want to, you know, every time it came up to a question and it's the funny part is I will always think about you and Rick, you guys popped in my mind. No, Jaden, don't break kayfabe. Don't do it. <laughs> and then, so, uh, I decided to be true. I uh, you know, I, again, kayfabe to me is not dead. Kayfabe mm -hmm. to me is real. But again, I didn't want to uh, kind of lie to the fans in a sense. So what, I picked certain questions to break kayfabe. You know, the people wanted to know, I would get like the same question. How is it behind a show? What does a wrestler do? What does a booker do? And stuff like that. So there, those type of questions, I broke kayfabe. And I told them what this and that, but I, I still, I still preserve a lot of stuff. There was a lot of things where people ask me, Hey, is it true? Is there a spring underneath the ring and stuff like that? Is there a microphone in the ring? I didn't go into those details, the secrets of wrestling. You know, I broke kayfabe halfway and I just so you, you still it. control the narrative. You, you're yes. choosing what, how bad is it if I break this kayfabe? How bad if it's if I don't like? Okay, that makes sense to me. And because the articles, they are interesting. You know, I, I mean, I've gotten to know a lot of things being in this world. Yes, uh, it's been really cool to see. But I, I can imagine, you know, being a fan, you know, the things that you want to know. But yes, you know, what do you deserve to know? What do you deserve to not know? Because yes, I, you're lie. right. You hit on a nail. I controlled it as best I could. Yeah. No, and, and, and that's smart to do, man. So uh, where can people find it? Can they find it online as well? Yeah, I think it's uh, rockawaystimes.tv. And they can, yeah, you know, they'll get, the, they'll get, be able to download it, you know, digitally, and then they can read it from there. I mean, yes, sir. A little personal here right now. I know you're going through a fair share. This pandemic has hit you worse than anyone that I no, really. Um, I said, fortunately, unfortunately, at the same time, because you're battling your own demons. Yes. You're battling your, your, your own case right here. It's not Corona. Talk to us. Talk to us about how you're feeling and what you're going through. All right. So uh, it's common knowledge by now. I will hope that uh, everybody knows I have cancer. I have stage three sarcoma. It's a cancer that started within the tissues. And it started for me in my lower back. Uh, it started in the form of a, of a tumor uh, over, the, over the 2020 during the pandemic. I had surgery to remove three tumors. 
they had found. And out of the, the you know, one tested out positive for cancer, the other two were negative. And I've been, uh, I'm going now close to, yeah, wow, I'm going close to a year now fighting this. Uh, it's been very, very tough. It's been very, very emotional. It's been very, very trying on me. Uh, I have an enormous amount of support and I, and I appreciate that from the fans. You know, uh, I had made it public, you know, because I just wanted to people to know what I was going through. And I'm a very private person, so it was a very tough decision to make it public. But I wanted to let people know what I was going through, my battles. Uh, I just didn't want to become a, how can I say this? It's going to sound bad either way, but I didn't want to become a Facebook posting that Eric Jaden just passed away and nobody knew anything about it. And I just, I didn't want that. So, right. Uh, yeah, I, I understand because you, as much as you are a private person, trust me, yeah. I am too. Yeah. You, you are a public figure. Yes. You know, and, and that's always something to keep in mind. Uh, as much as you want to leave certain stuff private, and you, again, it's about controlling the narrative. There's some things that are too big where you can't control. And I, yeah. I, you were right. Unfortunately, this was a case where it was too big to like really keep that hidden. Yeah, I figured that even even if I kept it hidden, eventually I think it would have leaked out to somebody, right. and then I would you know it would have came out. So I just wanted to be up and honest, and and then kind of let let people know what I'm doing, my battles, you know, on there. And I tell you, this has been something that I never thought it would happen to me. Nobody ever wants to hear the word cancer. No, uh, nobody does. Uh, I went through. Uh, this is going on. I'm going on my second treatment. I went through a treatment when it was six weeks with one of the more powerful chemotherapy drugs out there. Uh, it's, it's, it's actually very intimidating when they take it out of the freezer and they, you know, they leave it to, you know, to, to get it ready. It's red. So they call it the red devil. That's how powerful this oh, thing is. Wow. Hell yeah. By the way. <laughs> yeah. They call it a red devil. And, um, they figured that they wanted, they could knock it down with this, you know, on uh, real, you know, on there. And after the six weeks, we, we took a look at it and it didn't even make a dent into it. It actually just held it in place. That's it. So, you know, the doctor said we, you know, we didn't realize how aggressive this cancer is. And it's very, very aggressive. Like, you know, I'm going to not play around and tell you that, you know, I'm, it's not, it is, it's super aggressive. So now I'm going through another treatment. This treatment now is, it, it, it hits home with me in a sense where I have to be honest uh, that I wasn't sure I wanted to go through this treatment. It's long-term, it's three times a week, also with another different powerful chemotherapy drug. And it has the potential of hospitalizing me for long, long periods of times. Uh, it has the potential of me being half the person I am. I could lose tons of weight. And uh, thank the Lord, I've been able to keep my weight, you know, due, yeah. to, yeah, due to steroids and stuff like that they've been giving me. Uh, but I, I had a long conversation with my doctor. I, see, I went over to Memorial Sloan Kettering for a second opinion. Uh, I found there they were more caring over there. <laughs> I hate to say it that way, but they were more. I went to the doctor and I said, I want to live my life. I want my life back. And it's, 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 it, it, I told him, I, I, I broke down, I cried. And I said, I just want my life. I want to see my kids. I want to work out. I want to do stuff. And he says, we'll work with you. And that was the, that's all I wanted to hear. So that alone with those words, I decided to try this treatment. This treatment works 60%, you know, positivity rate it has on people. So okay. that was good to know. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic. Uh, if it doesn't work, there's other routes we can go. But I'll be honest with you and, you know, to everybody, if this fails, I will stop all treatments. I'll seek something alternative. Uh, I will hang out with you, Mark, and everybody and the whole gang as much as I can. And if, when my, my time comes, my time comes. I'm not going to live in the hospital. I just, I refuse. I rather, I'll give this a shot. And trust me, I am. I'm giving this a shot. Like right now, you, just before we started this interview, you are like, how are you feeling? And I'm, I said, I'm good, but I'm tired. I'm extremely tired. This wears you down so much. Your, your immune system is compromised. You can't do nothing. You can't do this and that. But I'm going to fight. 
I'm going to fight super hard. I have, you know, I have two beautiful daughters that I want to see get married and have kids. You know, I want to see my friends like you and Rick and Naya prosper, you know, and, you know, and move on. I want to see stuff, but if the case comes down, I will stop it and I'll just live the rest of my life the way I want to live. Well, I, for one, hopefully, uh, I'm hoping that this does work out, that this treatment does. I know it's a newer treatment. You just started it uh, just the other day, right? Yep, started on Monday. So tomorrow I go back for the third one on there. And, I, and believe it or not, I'm already feeling it. I, so I, like, I, like, I'm not looking forward to tomorrow, but, you know. Do you, do you see any difference at all? I mean, is, is it working better, you feel like? What are the doctors? Oh, no. Yeah, we won't know. We won't know until, I mean, every time I go there, uh, I feel like I call myself, uh, what do I feel? I, feel I, I call myself a pincushion. Every, every time I go, I get poked so many times with needles. It's, it's, it's amazing. Um, they take blood every time I go. Mm -hmm. So the, from the blood test, they monitor the levels. If the levels start to drop, that means that the chemo is working on there. So we're too early right now because it just started. So I would probably have a good sign of it within about four to five weeks. See, you know, hopefully that we have some good news, you know, that is bringing it down on there. It's, uh, again, it's very aggressive. The, the doctor said you have a very aggressive cancer and most people, you know, they pass away from it. They just, you know, they just don't, they can't live with the treatments. And you know what's an inspiration, Mark? I, it just popped, it popped in my mind because I, I always see it. It's a commercial for, uh, I think it's Schneider's Hospital. And there's a, a girl, a little girl there that she goes through chemotherapy three times a week. So when I look at that and I'm like, wow, that little girl is going three times and I'm going three times, you know, I'm going to give it my hell of a best shot you know, to do it. You know what I'm saying? That's an inspiration to me. I watch these little kids that actually do the same thing and they're half my size, half, you know, half the, you know, willpower and they're still surviving. That gives me hope. Listen, if there's one thing I've learned about you, it's to never count you out. I have done commentary for quite a few rematches. And if you hear it back, I say the same thing consistently. Never count Eric Jaden out. He always finds a way. And it's true. You've done yes. that in wrestling, and you're doing that in life. And I also believe that, to my core, for this case scenario, with you beating cancer, I believe you will find a way to beat this thing. And hopefully this, this new treatment yes. will be here. Yes. So you are a fighter. What do I always say to you, Eric? What do I say to you every time before you hit that curtain? You're Eric fucking Jaden. <laughs> Eric fucking Jaden. <laughs> Don't you forget that. <laughs> yes, I will not forget that. <laughs> Dude, thank you so much for being part of the show, man, for coming on to this. I know, um, I know you're tired. I know you've been going through a lot. So I don't want to hold you up too long. But before I let you go, though, yes. uh, I think the world wants to know what's next for Eric Jaden, though. What, what, where do you go from here? Well, fingers crossed, and we beat this, right? We beat this. We beat this down. I want to get back into shape so bad. <laughs> I gained so much weight, Mark. I hate it. I, uh, I gained pandemic weight on top of the steroids they give you. So it's fortunately, you know, like I kind of ballooned up a bit. Uh, my fighting weight is usually like 225. Right. Uh, I'm at 245 around there, so I'm, you know, a little bit chubbier now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so i'm a little chubbier now um i want to i want to definitely i, I just I, I miss actually so much the gym i really do because i was uh i was prohibited i couldn't go first of all because of covert goes and also because the uh the chemo they gave me before and unfortunately it's another thing that chemo supposed to work it didn't work did did some uh damage it did damage to my joints unfortunately and it does that so I'm, I'm battling that on top of battling the cancer i'm battling joint 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 damage to my knees and my thing and my elbows so i'm hoping that once i beat this i can get to some rehab where i can start to work out again and get back into shape and reunite with you and reunite with rick and reunite with naya and let and make magic happen again because we made magic. We made people believe. We made people believe that we were saints. We made people believe that we were assassins. And 
in my heart, whether they spent 10, 15, 20, $25, when they came to see us, they suspended disbelief and had a good time. And that makes me feel good. So I want to be able to do that one more time. So it's official. You are not going to retire. You have no, you, you, you don't even have that thought in your mind. I, I don't. I do and I don't. <laughs> we beat this. I'm going straight forward as best as I can. <laughs> listen, man. I am so glad to hear you say that. Because, listen, you know, I, I'm sure you've gotten it before. It's like, you know, why doesn't he retire? Blah, blah, blah. All that garbage. And that was before you even had this. That was before the pandemic. Yeah. Um, I, I know it's crossed your mind at least once before. Yes. But I'm glad to hear that even with all of this, you still have that fight in you. To not, you, not even just battle cancer, but to come back to the ring. To come back and lead the squad once again. Yes. To pick up where we left off and to win gold. Yes. That's, 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 it's like, it's in my, that's like my driving factor, you know? I think about it all the time, you know, and I have a lot of people like, you know, like Rick. He's, he always checks on me. I love Rick. Okay. He'll send me messages. Hey, remember we have more gold to win. <laughs> That's what he says. We have tag titles to win. He goes, I need you fight, fight. So it's a driving, you still, it's a driving big, factor. You, still have sorry? One. you still have that big one that you haven't gotten yet from BCW. You know, once I win that, if I ever do, hopefully <laughs> I'm retiring. <laughs> That's official <laughs> retirement. That's the big one. Yeah. I, 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 I that match was great. We created magic. Thank you for being part of that. You and I added so much to that match. Uh, but I need, I need one more shot at Mr. Carter. I think I got it. I think I got his number. I got him. I am right, right there. We definitely do. We definitely have unfinished business with Mr. Darius Carter, who's been going on to like what over 800 days and counting of being the BC, BCW World Heavyweight Champion. Yes, he's the man. You can't, you can't deny it. Listen, we can talk all we want about his attitude and how he carries that championship, but there's no denying how good he is in that ring and what he does for the business. I do respect him in that sense. But listen, man, he made Hollywood unpretty for a good week, so. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't happy about that. <laughs> wasn't happy about that either. I wasn't happy, yeah. <laughs> People don't forget. But once again, Eric, thank you again so much for stopping by. Uh, do please get better. Yes, sir. Rock out with you in person once again. And uh, for everyone, where can they follow you on social media? Uh, Facebook at Eric Jaden, at Twitter at Follow the Bad Guy, and Instagram at Bad Guy Sexiness. Beautiful. And you can find me at yourfavoriteactor.com. All my social media links are in there. Please follow, subscribe, Shot of Wrestling. You can find them all over the place, wherever you get your podcasts and all of our social media. It's at Shot of Wrestling. Much love to everyone. Tune in to next week. One is out.